Hey there, Village Church. Vicki Basinger here, and I'm sitting with Pastor Michael Fueling, and we are going through sermon Q&A for the sermon Practical Evangelism for a Lonely World, which was preached on June 13th, 2021. And today we are answering the question, why does God allow loneliness? It's a, it's a great question, and I want to get right to the answer because I think the answer is actually really helpful. Yeah. So there are emotions that we call red flag emotions. And basically what these are, these are emotions that God has designed us to have or experiences mm -hmm. that when we have them, the first thing we need to do to address the issue is go to the mechanic mm. to go to when you have a when you have an indicator light in your yep. car that's not on right yeah you don't just sit there and you're like i'll deal with it next week yep. what do they always say when the check engine light goes on yep. you go get over to the mechanic <laughs> yep. and so when when you have red flag emotions like like loneliness mm -hmm. or anxiety and some have debated whether loneliness is an experience or an emotion whatever it is yeah if there's a red flag experience or emotion you run to the lord yeah um, people might say okay what advice would you give me i'm lonely and, and honestly anything past run to the lord cast your anxiety cast your fear cast your loneliness um, run back to him mm. um, after that piece of advice any any really piece of advice i would give somebody after that needs to be kind of personalized yeah i feel like it might be a little presumptuous for me to give generalized advice yeah. because some people might know, need to go see a counselor mm. um, some might need to go see a pastor some might need to go to their friend group and just kind of step up and say here's what i need yeah. to function well um, and your friends might even love to give it to you if they knew what it was right. and you don't want to appear needy and so you don't and so you retreat and then this grows and um, there might be practical things in your life that are resolvable. You might, you might need medication. I, I have no idea. Right. It might actually be a hormonal issue. I mean, yeah. there are so many levels to experiences and emotions that I'm not even going to begin to dabble in right yeah. now. But what I know that I know that I know is that if you have loneliness, if you have a red flag emotion, um, it is it is not sin to experience this. Mm. Um, it is part of the design of God in your body to tell you something's off. Yeah. Um, and always when something is off, our only and first response is we go to the Lord. Then after we cast our anxieties on the Lord, after we go to him in prayer, after we open up his word, after we spend time with him and 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 deal with that part of it, then we go and we figure out what those next steps yeah. are, but first and foremost with the Lord. I think it's so interesting how anti-cultural it is. Like we have, you know, this feeling of loneliness mm. and basically the Lord's just like, oh, you get more alone yep. with me. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Right? Yeah. And our culture is saying like, no, you need to get out. You need to mm. be with your friends. Make sure that you're doing this. Yep. Get it. Get an activity. Find a hobby. Yep. You know, like just really totally, yeah. pushing Busy that. yourself. Busy yeah. yourself. Yeah. And then it will help you forget about it. But yeah. that will only last for... Yeah, speaking as an extrovert who surrounds himself with people yes. to not to numb the yeah. realities of life at Truly. times, you know, like yeah. it actually never deals with it's the an actual escape. Issue. It is. It's an escape, and you know, we we have those in all different ways. Each yeah. one of us has, you know, my, your, as a, as an introvert, mine is not people is per se. I like to read. Yeah. I like to say classical music. Mm -hmm. I like to play my piano. Like I, you know, these are the things that I need to escape. Wow, but you and I are made so I know. differently. <laughs> I'm like, I need people everywhere yes, all the time right now. Are you free? Are you free? Let's go play. And Let's go I'm do something. Like, Let's go on an adventure. Leave Anyone? me leave me alone. <laughs> don't touch me. Don't talk to me. Yeah. Right. Which as a mother of small yeah. children is very difficult to come by. Yeah, no, no. But uh, yeah. but I think that it's really interesting how, you know, the Lord has designed these red flag emotions, mm. which are, you know, really indicative. And some of us yeah. right here, um, if we get anxious, that even manifests itself physically. Yeah. Headaches, stomach aches, you know, things that actually start happening to your body. So yeah. having letting it go that far and really just knowing like, hey, I really need to run back to the Lord right now yeah. and spend some time with him. And some people need to spend time with the Lord alone for longer periods of time than yeah. others. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think that, you know, God made us to be emotional beings because we're made in his image. Mm. And we've talked about that at a great deal, yeah. you know, a great length. Mm. Um, so God has emotions, therefore we have emotions, but yep. he gave us these red flags because we are imperfect. Yep. So we are not going to experience joy the way that God does yep. or jealousy the way that yep. God does. We'll get it wrong yeah, and right. we'll go too far. Totally, yeah. There's also this this pendulum swing, which, so Brianna and I, uh, she's a counselor, we've been to counseling and uh, there are certain kinds of counselors that have really aggravated us. And I'll tell you who they are. And I, I want to make sure our listeners don't hear this because um, there are certain counselors who will go to and they'll say, all you need is the Bible and God. Mm. And that's it. And what I don't want to do is have somebody just say, if you're a personal relationship with God, 
does not get rid of all of your negative emotions, you have a problem. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, what we found though, like, I think this is interesting. Uh, I believe, I believe, gosh, my brain is forgetting, but I, I believe it was Elijah and God's remedy for his depression was eat some food and take a nap. <laughs> Yes. You know what I mean? And it's like, that's my kind of recipe right, right? there. You yeah. Know? And, yeah. And it, it, it is very interesting. Like when, when there are things going on, if I have a lack of sleep, if I have way too much caffeine, mm. if I am doing too much, if I'm avoiding the Lord, I mean, it's interesting how all of these, um, um, these physical things actually produce emotional realities in mm. me. And so, in fact, when I go back to the Lord, it's often he brings conviction, like, no, actually you're running to these idols and yeah. these idols are, producing in you loneliness and anxiety yeah. and fear and panic attacks and different things. And, and it's my time with the Lord that puts all of these things into perspective. But I want to be clear that the throw a Bible verse at it approach mm. um, doesn't usually work, especially the deeper the emotional issue. But what we do is we run to the Lord and then we ask his spirit for wisdom. Okay. Yeah. Um, are there things out of my control? Do I need to see a doctor? Do I need to stop um, whatever the habit or addiction is? The problem is probably the answer is yes. If it's, <laughs> An addiction. Probably. We're yep. go with an affirmative. Um, but all of these things over here create this red flag um, uh, experience or emotion. And then when you go to the Lord, he gives you insight and wisdom often. Sometimes, you know, you just, you don't know what to do next and you get some good pastoral advice and the people yeah. of God are filled with the spirit of God. I think sometimes, sometimes um, the next step isn't clear until you go to the people of God. Somebody yes. might have a gift of wisdom and mm -hmm. you might need to just sit and let God minister to you through their wisdom. That's a very possible yeah. and they can help you take a next step. I but agree. You go to the Lord first. We don't just, that's not the end all and be all. It doesn't fix necessarily every negative emotion, but without that foundation, everything else is just kind of not yeah. total. And I would also say, you know, red flag emotions are in place to protect us. Mm -hmm. And if we have someone who is listening into this and you mm -hmm. are feeling, you know, extreme with your emotions, if you really are you know feeling suicidal or extreme on that loneliness side um please don't isolate yourself with your bible in a room and not talk to anybody mm -hmm. like that's not the point of this conversation it yep. is to point you back to the lord biblical counsel but also seek somebody out like a pastor or a yep. counselor or somebody in your life who can talk you through what that next step might be so i think that you know going through those kind of you know can we give it like a one two three you know get with the lord yep uh, make sure you're spending time with him. Point yourself back to him. That's probably like the number one thing. Get back yep. to the mechanic. Totally. Um, talk to someone, someone yep. who is, you know, a godly, wise person in your life who you can trust and rely on. Yep. And then number three, take that next step, whether it is going to see a counselor or a doctor, or, you yep. know, actually killing doing, an idol. If the Lord yes. tells you what it is, it's this thing. You're making exactly. bad decisions. Just deal with it yeah. decisively. Amen. Good job. All right. Uh, I want to invite you back next time. We have more questions and sermon Q&A where we go deeper into our sermons that we preach every week. So join us next time.